the first question is that uh, what is cloud computing when we get into to understand uh, the different cloud computing technologies like azure or aws or google cloud okay so the question is that what is cloud computing and before getting into all this information let's understand actually how it looks on the ground and what is the real architecture of the cloud computing why we call it cloud computing here let's understand through the paint so first of all what is a data center so we all know that let's say data center is like a dedicated place inside your company okay where you place all of your backend uh, devices so it include uh, servers it include your racks as well as it include all of the networking devices like uh, switches router firewall okay if you have any storage let's say san nfs so all these things are basically in your data centers okay so when any company started data centers so what and all things are uh, important here the first important thing is the cost okay when a company deploy a data center they have to invest a lot of uh, amount here so that is cost call as a upfront cost or capex here capital investment okay so price of your all of the servers first we have to purchase and then you have to configure them after setting up your data center you have to do the maintenance on day to day basis as well okay and that is called your operational cost let's say opex here okay so in that opex uh, the salary of uh, it engineers will be included those are doing the day to day maintenance of your data center also uh, engineers from the facility department as well as you need a monitoring team also because data center is a serious business one minute to minute monitoring is required in case any server goes down or any of the devices goes down from here so what will happen all of the dependent services will be down for the end customer so it may impact your uh, financial part also for the company so that is the reason you need a solid monitoring team also and uh, it engineers facility engineers okay why facility engineers because you need a cooling system also all of these devices produce lot of heat so you need to maintain the temperature of your uh, data center as well as power connection so power connection management uh, also like a, one of the critical task inside the data center so this is one thing the first factor is the cost second factor is the effort so you need lot of effort here because i told that data center management is a serious business so you need uh, engineers you need management people uh, and uh, minute to minute day to day week to week basis you have to put your effort to ensure that your data center is available here apart from that after putting lot of cost and lot of efforts you also have to take care of the maintenance part of these data centers so there are two kind of maintenance one is planned and second is unplanned maintenance planned maintenance suppose you want to upgrade any operating system inside the server or you want to upgrade the os configuration of your switches or router or you want to replace your uh, ups okay so <clears throat> when you do all these things so dependent services will be impacted so you will Uh, send a user communication in advance that so and so date from uh, so and so time uh, your services are going to be down okay so there is a significant downtime here even if you do the planned maintenance in case of unplanned maintenance also downtime is there unplanned means suddenly let's say anything goes wrong your server is crashed or your uh, switch got crashed so this is your unplanned maintenance because you have to fix it to make your service available to your end customer so maintenance is also one of the factor so you have to invest a lot of money lot of effort and after doing all of this thing you cannot ensure that there is a 100% uptime okay and this will all together it become a very hectic process for a company to manage all this now when nist made a declaration that if someone 
is having any unused capacity inside the data center they can start renting it out okay so this idea actually picked up by amazon so amazon was the first company they picked up this idea and they converted it into a business model so what was the business model so amazon said no need to manage all this thing okay this is not required so what i will do instead of you are purchasing all of these devices and setting it up and doing the maintenance what i will do i will create my own physical data center and this data center will be available in different part of the world fine so this is your mumbai region this is your singapore region and this is your let's say north virginia region okay so aws has put their data center in these places and concept is aws says that instead of your own data center i have all the facilities are available in my data center if you can come and opt for the services you just need to pay the money rest of the things we will take care of Uh, that including the maintenance including the deployment of your resources all these data centers are interconnected with each other okay with the high end private backbone network so they does the replication also they are also connected with the internet internet is known as cloud so that is the reason this whole model is known as the cloud computing here right so everything is connected through the internet let's say this is me with my laptop or you with your laptop and you are also connected with the internet here so now what aws has done they have given you a portal okay the portal is aws dot amazon dot com okay basically what happens now through this portal aws dot amazon dot com you can access these back end data centers and you can deploy the resources so on your laptop screen on your internet browser you will open aws.amazon.com and uh, if you have the account you will log in there and once you log in okay you can connect to these back end data centers here so cloud is acting as a interface between you and the back end data centers so that is the reason this whole model is known as the cloud computing okay and uh, this is the link or this is the interface through that actually we are going to connect with the back end data center and create the resources in case of azure uh, the portal will be the portal.azure.com okay in case of aws this is the portal what we are going to use aws.amazon.com so let me take you through my ppt here so you can see here there are different regions okay where you have the aws data centers so uh, you can see different part of the world these data centers are located and we call them as a region north virginia is region okay if you talk about india mumbai is region here singapore is a region here and all these regions are interconnected with each other you can see these are the wiring and this represent that all these regions are interconnected uh, with each other with the high end backbone private network this is not internet actually this is a private network created by the aws and it's a very fast network right so how to access aws you can go here on the portal and you can type aws.amazon.com and this is your portal here right so let's start from very first point so suppose you are trying to access the portal first time so what you need you need a account first of all then only you can log into this portal then only you can create the resource so how to create a account in this portal to create a account let's say you are just typing here aws free account okay for the lab purpose we want to create a free account so click on here and here you will get a option called create a free account 
and what and all things you are going to get into this free account that you need to understand. So these are the services. Okay. And inside these services, this much amount of data or services you are going to get. So let's say if you are talking about the virtual machine, so you can create the virtual machine under the free trial, okay, free tier, and you can run that virtual machine for the 750 hours here. Okay. Similarly, uh, S3 bucket, 5 GB up to you can create under the free trial. After that, you have to pay the amount for that. Clear? So let's do not worry about all these things because we are going to discuss each and everything in detail. For so this is our first class. Let's start from the very first point. So I'm going to create one free account. Basically, I will show you how to create a free account. Then we will start them. Thanks. So to create a free account, just come here and click on create a free account option. Okay. So now you have an option to create a new account, AWS account. So click on it. You mentioned the email ID. Let's say the mail ID is learninghubtech3 at the rate gmail.com. Mention your password. And uh, mention the AWS account name. So how you want this account to reflect. Okay, so you can type learning hub tag in this and click on continue. Okay, so now once you give this primary information, it will ask you about the other information like what type of account you want to create. If you want to create this account for the professional purpose, let's say for uh, in your office, you want to create this account, you choose the professional one. But if you are creating it for your lab purpose, for your personal use, you can select personal here and uh, you can give the full name like uh, you can mention your name here, phone number, okay, country also. Let's say the address. Okay, so finally it will ask you about the credit card or debit card information. In Azure, it asks you for the credit card information. Credit card is mandatory there. But in case of AWS, credit card or debit card, whatever you want, you can mention here. Okay, so you can fill up the information. Once you've done that, click on verify and add and your free account will be created. So in case of AWS, this account will not reflect immediately. As per the AWS, the SLA is around 24 hours. Okay. And um, it may reflect in one hour or two hours also sometime. So totally depend on the how it is getting processed in the back end, but the maximum period of time is 24 hours. So when you are creating this account after that, if it is not accessible, so do not get panic. It will come after some time. AWS take its time to process it or to verify. So once your account is created, now you have the account. Okay. So once you fill up all this thing and click on submit, your account is created. So what we can do now, <clears throat> so click on sign into the console. Okay, so here you have two options, root user and the IAM user. What is IAM user? We will discuss later. Right now, just focus here, root user, and it is asking you about your account. So I have one account already created learning up 387 at the rate gmail.com click on next here and provide the password click on sign in so this is how this console looks like you can see this is the display name uh, of my account that is sanjay ka 387 so i have logged in here and all these are the aws services on which we are going to work on 
okay so everything is available in the form of services we used to we should use those services to create the resources uh, if you are new to the cloud computing you do not know how to work on that you can compare this concept with the hotel so let's say you get into the hotel in hotels there are multiple services available or and hotel is the service provider like aws okay so if you want to do the dinner so you have to use that service and you have to pay for that right dinner is prepared by someone else dinner is prepared by the service provider who is the service provider hotel is the service provider in this case you are just paying the money and utilizing that services so same thing the same concept also work in case of the cloud computing so everything what you use or do the setup you are using it with the help of the services here okay and these services are simplified and everything is is completely done in the back end by the azure itself we just have a console we should use the logic we should fill up the form just click on the submit as soon as you click on the submit on the back end it is aws responsibility to manage or deploy everything okay so when we proceed with our practices with our demo you will understand this concept uh, in much better way from the depth